right, guys, welcome back to another one. I gotta apologize in advance for the wind. I wasn't expecting to be this windy, but we are back out here at the ghost ring. Now, you might have seen in a video in the past, uh, my kids bought me for my birthday last year a Mosin Nagant. Very nice rifle. Chambered 762 by 54, if you didn't already know that. Now, that ammo is fairly cheap. Uh, it's readily available. This is one reason why I like it. You can shoot as much as you want. You don't have to really worry about it. These day and age, you might want to just hang on to a little bit. But I was concerned about messing up the stock on it. It's a very nice wood grain stock. And uh, I want to shoot this gun. And I want to shoot a lot. But I don't want to mess the stock. So what I did was I went to Colonel Mustard. Yes, it's Colonel Mustard here in Canada. Uh, I, believe I believe they're in Alberta. If there's a correction there, I'll put the correction on the screen right now. But I believe they're in Alberta. I ordered an ATI Mosin the Gaunt synthetic stock. This is it here. Now, they're not ready fit, okay? Not, some of the Mosins are different than others. This gives you the generic stock. You do have to do a little bit of grinding inside, and I'll show you that in a second. I took the wood stock off, put that stock on. This is kind of where we're at now, okay? The fit, as you can see, a little bit of grinding. But you see right here, a bit of a gap there, which means I've got to grind down in here. The two bolts that hold it on, the same bolts as before, one underneath the bolt, and one in the bottom of the mag. That's what holds it on here. The action works the same. It's a pretty good fit right out of the box. Does need a little bit of work, but it's a good fit right out of the box. So Colonel Mustard, thank you very much. I think I paid, like I said, 156 bucks plus shipping. I think it was $8 shipping. Not bad. Now, I can paint this stock. I can do what I want to this stock. And I'm not gonna worry about it. Uh, I am getting some optics for the top and possibly a bipod for the bottom. And we're gonna see just how good a Mosin Nagant is at distance because I've got another range that I go to I can shoot up to 600 yards. So, might be a stretch for this, but I guess we'll find out when that day comes. So, Nate and I just came out to the farm today. We're just gonna shoot this a couple times, not a lot. Again, we're into conserving ammo. Still got the iron sights. I got a propane tank that's empty. It's set up at about 100 meters away. And we're going to shoot this and see how it feels with the new stock on it. All right, guys, one thing I will say is this synthetic stock is considerably heavier than the wood. We're good to go. That was a hit. So we were about 100 yards, iron sights. I did see the tank move this time, so let's see where we hit. There's the entrance, there's the exit. Now I was aiming dead center, but I'm also free handing this here, so I'm not on a platform or anything like that, so obviously the waiver to the left was me. I really like that stock. That stock kind of absorbs a lot of the recoil, so you're not feeling it. On the other Mosin stock, it's got a metal butt plate on it, which will have a tendency to sting a little bit. But with that, not bad at all. All right, we're gonna load up another round. We're gonna give Nate a shot at this and uh, see if we can hit that tank. Again, we're at 100 yards. All right, that was Nate's first shot with the new stock. I gotta tell you, the added weight, I don't mind the added weight. That seems to eat up some of the recoil. I told Nate to aim low, he hit the bottom of the tank, and then exited the bottom of the tank into the dirt, which, again, we're shooting freehand out here. We got no platforms. When I put the scope on it and the bipod on it, we'll shoot from a platform, we'll see how it does from there. But that was the purpose of today, was to bring it out, send a few rounds through it, and then just see how it feels. And 
So far, I'm impressed. So Colonel Mustard, thank you very much. 156 bucks, and I'm not worried about banging it up. I think we're gonna get the 22 out now, send some out of that, and uh, see you in a minute. Nate's got the 22, he's gonna got two mags. I'm not sure what he's got in each mag, but he's gonna shoot that tank. Listen for the ting. We'll see how many times he gets it. sound you want to hear. It sounds like Nate hit it every time we're going down there and have a look. Those are all good hits. 22 doesn't have enough power to get through there. Mind you, it is 100 meters, so it still won't go through no matter how close you are. Nevertheless, they're all on the mark, and that's all that matters. Nate's got his small pew out now. He's going to uh, show us how that works, and then we're going to break it down here in a second, just like a regular Glock. All right, so this Glock is about 200 bucks. It is a BB gun, like I said. It runs on compressed air, which is in the mag, and the BBs go in the front. You ask yourself, why would you spend $200 on a BB gun? The weight. The recoil is just like the Glock 17. What I like about this is, in my opinion, the grip is 75% in shooting a small pew. It allows you to get up on the tang, just like a normal Glock, your thumb placement, and then your secondary hand. So it allows you to practice each and every time. Practice is the other 25%. <laughs> finding ammo is in there somewhere too, but it allows you to get, keep your grip the same and consistent each and every time. Also, the sight picture, rear sight, front sight, they're both well lit. And when you're shooting the pistol, you want to align the front sight within the center of the rear sight. That's your sight picture. So you got your grip, which you can practice. You got your recoil. Is it worth it? I'd say absolutely, especially if you do intend on getting an actual Glock in the future. And yes, I'm partial to Glocks. All right, guys, so Nate's gonna break this thing down just like a regular Glock. Take the mag out, unlock the slide, slide. So you broke it down into three main pieces. You got the, obviously the mag, the grip, and the slide. The slide's got a spring just like the regular Glock, however there's also some smaller internal parts in there that we don't want to lose. And for all you people that are thinking about getting one of these, a couple things to keep in mind safety wise. You point this at an officer and you're going to end up with holes in you. It's simple as that. It is as real as you're going to get. As far as training goes, this is a great tool for training. It's a $200 tool for training but if you're looking to get a get a small pew in the future this is a great place to start why because you can learn your grip you can learn your stance and you get some recoil from it kind of gives you a little bit of what to expect the only thing you don't get the round exiting the barrel and the bang the slide is metal the grip is polymer uh, the mag itself is metal as well your co2 canister goes in the bottom here and again your bb's go in here Pretty cool tool. Pretty cool tool. Switch. So anyway, that's about all we got going on out here. I wanted to do a little explanation about uh, Nate's small pew. Um, again, well worth it. The uh, ATI Monte Carlo and Mosin Nagant stock, 156 bucks, well worth it. I'm not worried about banging it up. I already mentioned that. And I think we're gonna paint it up and put a nice scope on it and just see what a Mosin can really do. 
Uh, the 22, we just come out to throw some of that around. Again, this whole time we spent four rounds out of the Mosin. We spent 20 rounds out of the 22. So again, we're not out here wasting ammo. We're out here testing what we got. Uh, BBs are a dime a dozen here, so Nate's loading and unloading that thing. But other than that, that's all we got for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all in the next one. Later.